We're now less than five years away from a moment nobody really wants to think about. The ISS, humanity's very first space station, will fall out of orbit and burn up, leaving nothing but debris. And if we don't have a replacement ready by then, China's going to take the lead in low Earth orbit. It'd be like openly folding in a high stakes game. But that future isn't happening. Because Vast Space, a company that hasn't taken a single dollar of NASA funding, has just pulled off something huge. They've introduced Haven 1, the most advanced commercial space station module in the world. Soon, it won't just replace the ISS. It might also crush China's ambitions, right when they think they're on top. And that future doesn't rely on Vast alone. SpaceX is part of the equation, too. If Vast is the bullet, then SpaceX is the gun that fires it. So, what exactly is Haven 1? At its core, it's a space module, similar to the ones NASA is funding right now, like Axiom Hab 1, Orbital Reef's Life Habitat, or Star Lab's Habitation Module. All of them are strong contenders, each built with the ambition of one day replacing the ISS. But here's the difference. While those competitors secured hundreds of millions of dollars in government contracts, Vast didn't get any of that. They built theirs entirely with their own money, and somehow, their module is already way ahead. By July this year, Vast had completed Haven 1's primary structure. By October, they began the final welding work on the hull for testing and integration. And by the end of that same month, the whole module was rolled out to the Mojave Desert in California for structural testing. Sitting on its test stand, it looked bright, massive, and more flight-ready than ever. But they're not finished yet. VAST has completed 18 out of 22 major milestones, with full completion expected by May 2026, and they plan to launch it that same month. Oh wait, if Haven 1 is still in the testing phase, why are people so confident it'll beat every other competitor and become the station that replaces the ISS? Those remaining milestones aren't just checkboxes. If even one of the last five fails, Vast's dream could fall apart overnight. But maybe that worry is a little overblown. Because recently, Vast pulled off something big with SpaceX, a full mission success that proves their ambition is real, and their progress is just as real. Before launching Haven 1, Vast wanted to be absolutely sure everything would work. So they built a test satellite called Haven Demo, a 515-kilogram spacecraft packed with the same technologies and software that will fly on Haven 1. It carried the propulsion system, the guidance and navigation software, the RF communication system, and much more. In other words, it was Haven 1, just in satellite form. And the good news? It was a complete success. Haven Demo launched on November 2, 2025, aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 during the Bandwagon 4 rideshare mission from Cape Canaveral. Right after deployment, it unfolded its solar arrays, reached positive power, recorded 4K data of the entire sequence, and established initial contact with ground stations, confirming that every system was healthy. And honestly, the mission was such a success that the team inside VAST's ground control center absolutely erupted, just like SpaceX did when Falcon Heavy flew for the first time. It's a strong sign that Haven 1 will succeed too. And what makes it even more impressive is the timeline. Haven Demo went from concept to orbit in just two years, an insane pace for anything related to a space station. Most traditional station modules take five, even ten years, before they see daylight. But VAST isn't here to move slowly. Their entire identity is built around one principle, speed through smart design. Unlike the old aerospace giants who get stuck in endless reviews and perfectionism, VAST moves like a startup in orbit, fast, iterative, and relentlessly adaptive. A lot of that mindset comes straight from their biggest partner, SpaceX. Instead of waiting for the perfect design on paper, VAST builds, tests, learns, and rebuilds. That's how progress works in this new era of spaceflight, through action, not hesitation. And to maintain this breakneck pace, VAST does almost everything in-house at their Redondo Beach facility. Their team is lean, just around 900 people, all focused on a single, shared goal. It's not just speed that defines them. Their success is also reflected in the partners they choose. Take their decision to launch on SpaceX's Falcon 9, for example. That's smart thinking. Falcon 9 boasts a 99.4% success rate across nearly 600 launches, and it just set a record with 30 flights using the same booster. Elon Musk even confirmed it on X. 30 flights of the same rocket. 
And yeah, the Haven Demo satellite is planned to stay in orbit for six months, during which it will run a series of additional tests to minimize any risks when Haven 1 itself is launched into orbit aboard a Falcon 9 next May. Once in orbit, VAST's first operational space station will host up to four crewed missions over its three-year lifetime. Each visit will bring four astronauts for 10 to 14 days, living and working inside the first commercial space habitat ever built entirely by a private company. The first crewed flight, VAST-1, is targeted for late June 2026, flying aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which will handle both transport and life support. After that, the crew will live in Haven 1's habitable volume, which is about 45 cubic meters, roughly the size of a city bus. Of course, it won't feel cramped. In fact, it can even feel surprisingly spacious. Inside, the astronauts will have four sleeping quarters, a common area with large observation windows, a microgravity research lab, and a corridor for storing personal gear, all designed with a minimalist yet ultra-modern aesthetic, kind of like a five-star hotel in space. But VAST's CEO, Max Hayat, made it clear, the focus isn't luxury, it's productivity. Haven 1 is designed to be a place where astronauts can rest better, communicate better, and work better. And none of that would be possible without SpaceX. They provide everything else, launches, transportation, training, and even infrastructure. It's a full-spectrum partnership. Falcon 9 handles the launch, Crew Dragon carries the astronauts, Starlink manages communications, and power systems are integrated across both platforms. SpaceX essentially provides a near-turnkey path to orbit. Together, they form the backbone of a new commercial space era. However, another challenge arises. Once Haven 1 is in orbit, it needs at least one spacecraft docked at all times. That role falls to Dragon, not just for transport, but also as a lifeboat and to help maintain the station's altitude. Because, according to physics, it will gradually be pulled back toward Earth. Currently, SpaceX has five active Dragon capsules. Endeavor, Resilience, Endurance, Freedom, and Grace. Using just one to support Haven 1 could impact other missions to the ISS. In other words, over the next few years, the ISS will likely scale back some science and cargo missions to prioritize support for the construction of newer stations. Take Haven 2, for example. While Haven 1 is still essentially a test bed, Haven 2 is designed to be a true successor to the ISS and its plans are nothing short of ambitious. Just like the ISS before it, Haven 2 will be assembled module by module in orbit over several years. The plan is to launch the first module in 2028, then continue expanding it until completion sometime after 2030. Once finished, Haven 2 will consist of eight separate modules connected together. Imagine the scale. This isn't a bus anymore. It's essentially a small interstellar city, a massive leap from Haven 1. And to get a sense of what it will feel like for those living there, consider this incredible number, 12.5 meters. That's the width of the panoramic observation window, one of the largest ever built for space, promising views of Earth unlike anything we've seen before. So, where does the Vast and SpaceX project fit in the bigger picture? Well, it's part of a completely new commercial space race. The main driver of this race is NASA itself, through its Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations program. NASA has essentially changed the rules. Instead of building and running their own space station, they now act as a customer, renting space on private stations. This saves money and frees NASA to focus on more distant goals, like Mars. And this policy has ignited fierce competition, and VAST isn't racing alone. While VAST is making waves with Haven Demo and Haven 1, another competitor is picking up speed on the other side of the track, Starlab Space. On November 20th, Janus Henderson Group, a massive UK investment firm managing over $484 billion in assets, officially announced its funding for Starlab. The exact amount remains under wraps, but statements from Janus Henderson grabbed the industry's attention. They claim Starlab has the best design, the lowest costs, and the most attractive business model among the ISS replacement projects targeting post-2030. This isn't some small venture fund. It's one of the world's top traditional financial institutions, making its first major bet on a commercial space station. And it makes sense. Starlab is moving fast. 
55% of its research capacity is already reserved, mainly for biopharmaceuticals and cancer drugs. The main structure has a contractor, assembly and testing partners are in place, and in just a few weeks, they'll enter a critical design review phase. With just one launch planned via Starship in 2028, Starlab will arrive in orbit as a giant inflatable station, backed by a powerhouse alliance. Airbus, Northrop Grumman, Mitsubishi, Palantir, and now a financial giant from London. The race to replace the ISS is heating up, and it's clear there are two very different approaches. Vast is going fast, lean, and doing it all on its own, trying to get to orbit first. Starlab is moving a bit slower, but it's backed by big industry names and serious Wall Street money, aiming to become the official ISS successor. Both are racing hard, just in different directions with very different resources. And here's the kicker. For the first time, Wall Street is officially betting on a commercial space station. This isn't just about tech billionaires anymore. The stakes are bigger than ever. So, what do you think? Which one will reach orbit first, Haven or Starlab? Drop your answer in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much. Around this time last year, United Launch Alliance officials predicted that 2025 would be their busiest year ever. CEO Tori Bruno told reporters the company planned up to 20 launches, split almost evenly between the old Atlas Vive rocket and their eagerly anticipated new Vulcan rocket. Now, ULA is likely to finish 2025 with just six launches, five Atlas Vive missions, and a single Vulcan flight. While this still makes 2025 their busiest year since 2022, it falls far short of the original forecast. The next and final launch of the year is scheduled for December 15th, when an Atlas V will carry Amazon's broadband satellites for the Kuiper Network from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. Vulcan's only flight this year occurred on August 12th, deploying a test military navigation satellite along with at least one classified payload. That mission marked Vulcan's third flight and its first national security mission after certification by the U.S. Space Force.